Well, as the lake effect storm continues for the next few days, it could lead to some power outages. And tonight we are getting an inside look into the operational center that controls electricity going to 472,000 residential customers, along with thousands and thousands of commercial and industrial customers here in the western New York area. Well, two on your side's Kelly Dudzik shows us how National Grid prepares for and responds to storms that interrupt power in this two on your side original. Like a puzzle, you know, you're trying to put a huge puzzle back together the best way you can and, and not guessing at what it's going to be. National Grid's 800 regional employees train year round to handle any massive power outages caused by storms. A lot of times it's historical data that we'll use to make sure that we got enough people in to you know, do what we got to do during the roughest of storms. Two on your side recently got a rare look inside National Grid's regional control center, a massive room full of computers and the people who control our electricity. Here we uh, operate the uh, electric system, the substations, and uh, dispatch trouble jobs to our crews to uh, fix problems reported by the public. And this is a highly secure area. This is. Tim Bain runs the control center and is in charge of monitoring and controlling the electric system. He says there are three basic systems that control and restore power. One is the outage management system. What are those dots? Power outages and trouble calls. Okay. Uh, in, in our area, we have just uh, one customer out of power in the Western Division. Uh, and across the New York State, we have about 160 customers out. It also has our crews on there, if you zoom in close oh, okay. enough, and our circuits. Uh, but it shows uh, weather as well. And keeping an eye on the forecast is a big part of Tim's job. One computer program allows him to track storms heading for western New York to see if they have a history of knocking out power. There's a number rating system. Wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour. It might be a level two. Um, heavy wet snow might be a level three. Uh, things like that allow us to uh, uh, make some decisions about how we're going to staff and be prepared for what could possibly happen. When restoring power, critical care facilities are a priority. Hospitals, nursing homes, wastewater treatment plants, sewer treatment plants, police and fire stations, and schools. They are all defined in this massive emergency response plan. National Grid also focuses on the largest outages. We will start to work those immediately and we work our way down through our restoration priority list until we ultimately get down to what we call singles, okay. um, which is an individual customer that's out. It doesn't mean they're any less important to National Grid, but the way that our restoration priorities are established, we need to work the largest jobs first and then work our way down. As crews assess damage, your estimated time of restoration or ETR can change. Once we set our, I guess, estimated time of restoration to a certain time, people think, okay, this is the time that we're going to have power back. And a lot of times it changes throughout the day, throughout, the, you know, if it's a couple day storm, it will change. We try to work up to a certain point and that time will change because we can energize maybe a portion of what we just did. And then the people beyond that are still waiting and, you know, it could be the same time that we originally said it is. Right now, the system heavily relies on customers reporting outages themselves. But in the future, smart meters will report them automatically. Before this decade is out, um, all of our customers in upstate New York will have a smart meter uh, installed in their home. And as Jeremiah said, it's going to give us the ability to not even have to wait for a customer to call or send a text and say we're out of power we're going to know uh, immediately. In Buffalo, Kelly Dudzik, Channel 2 News.